Hi, it's Will from StoneTheCastle.com and this is a tutorial on how to make a homemade in egg incubator and you can see I have my incubator running out of a, I made it just out of a styrofoam cooler and I have um, Larry, Mo, and Shemp and, Shemp and Curly in there and waiting to be hatched. So this is the incubator. Not hard to make. There's a few rules of thumb and I'll explain everything to you, what you need, what temperatures you need to keep it at and what humidity and whatnot and how to do all of this. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can be really flexible. So let me launch into the tutorial of, of uh, parts and uh, how to make it. I have all the materials here you need and, I want, and uh, let me go over a couple of important things. The whole point behind the egg incubator is to uh, maintain two specific things. One is the temperature inside and the other is the humidity. So that's all you want to do is you, you want to create some kind of a box that keeps the temperature and the humidity stable within the particular range that's proper for the eggs to hatch. Uh, you want to keep the temperature between 97 and about 101 degrees. You don't want it to go over 101 degrees. And you want to keep the humidity approximately 55 to 70 percent humidity. So that's what we're shooting for and we can do that with just a simple you know styrofoam cooler. You can use a plastic cooler. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but you keep that concept in mind to keep the temperature and the humidity within those ranges and you'll be good. You can, almost can't go wrong. So let me go over how, I, how I'm going to do this. And this is a lot of people have done it this way. This works pretty well. I uh, took my, I have uh, some duct tape, some light bulbs, a temperature and humidity monitor, a digital one. Um, here's a lamp that I use and you can use almost any kind of a lamp a bowl and a sponge for water some chicken wire I like this chicken wire it's got the quarter inch squares this is nice and a picture with a glass or a plastic front on it and of course my chicken eggs so you can improvise a lot of this stuff and go a lot go at it a lot of different ways and you'll see as I build it what I mean now, light bulb selection can be a little bit tricky. I tried a bunch of different light bulbs, and you'll probably have to try some different light bulbs on your own. 25 watt light bulb works good for me. They gave me good results. So you might want to try a 25 watt. Now the digital the thermometer and humidity gauge, I bought two of them. The first one I bought, I looked at it, it had a plus or minus two degrees so that's quite a bit of range there so I decided I'm not going to use that one I wanted to get a little bit more accurate than two degrees so that might be something you want to look at try to get something a digital thermometer that's uh, as accurate as possible I took took the glass out of an old picture frame and I cut out the top of the styrofoam container and then I just taped the glass to it now that's our observation hole now we can look in and monitor the chickens the chicks and watch them so next what I've done here is and you could actually do this project without any, chick any chicken wire but there's a couple of nice things about the chicken wire that I like See that? I have this little setup here the base here I'll put the eggs in the water on this and the reason for this is that once the chicks hatch um, they'll have a lot of excrement and you'll, that'll be able to fall down through. It'll make it much easier to keep this clean. And this part here is to protect the light bulb. So once that light bulb is inside there, it's kind of cordoned off in this area. Stay away from the chickens and it's much safer. That's uh, about the biggest thing that you have to consider is you want to make sure this light bulb is in place nicely so it doesn't touch the sides or the foam or anything because you want to absolutely at all costs avoid the risk of fire. Okay, so you cut a hole in the end of your cooler like this. Put the bulb through it in the socket. Tape it all up really well and then put your screen and put your um, chicken chicken wire in. Now, you want to tape this up really good. You want no leaks. You want no holes. Because what we're going to do is we're going to secure this as well as we can, seal it up, monitor the temperature. If the temperature goes too high, what you do then is you punch small holes in this 
to uh, relieve the temperature and bring it down. And so you can monitor and adjust the temperature that way by po poking holes. If you put too many, tape them up until you get the temperature about right. And uh, with the humidity, you um, adjust the humidity by um, adding or subtracting water. You can even take the sponge out if need be. Or just, just put the sponge in it. So you tinker with it before you actually put your chicken eggs in there. Okay, put your thermometer in there and your water dish with some water in your sponge. And then uh, we'll seal this up <coughs> and run it to see how the temperature goes. The eggs will be over here. Keep the eggs away from the bulb near and near, near your thermometer. Here, I'll show you. I'm going to put the eggs right here. But not now. Right now I'm going to test this to get the temperature right. Now about eggs. <coughs> You got to get them from a farm. You can't use store-bought eggs, and you have to try to get eggs that are fertilized. There's no real way to know that, but if you talk to the person that's um, raising the chickens, tell them you'd like fertilized eggs, and then they'll, you know, there's a good chance that they will be fertilized. But not all of them will hatch, and you don't have to get them and do them the same day. If you need a day or two, it's okay. You just keep them room temperature at a reasonable moisture and they should be okay for up to up to as long as a week or 10 days and then you can do your incubator so don't panic if you can't get the eggs into your incubator right away it can be a few days while you make your incubator and you test it so now what I've done here is I've run the duct tape in the back so it acts as a hinge and I'm going to give that a try to see how that works that would be okay we're taking a look inside there and uh, everything looks good Got the humidity between 55 and 70, and the temperature is between, uh, what was it, 98 and 101, and it's 99. So, something like this, you take your time and you tweak it as you need to. Um, tape it up a little tighter if the temp needs to go up. Punch a couple of holes in it if the temp needs to go down. Add or remove water as the humidity uh, changes. So, now I'm going to put the eggs in there, and a couple of rules about the eggs. For the first 18 days, you need to rotate them a quarter to a half a turn three times a day. So, and the, for the last three to four days, don't rotate them at all. As far as the humidity goes, um, 55 to 70 is great. On the low end of that is fine, but for those last three to four days, try to get the humidity up to around you know 65 to 70. It's important for the, the shells, the for the hatching of the chicks. You know, the, the humidity does soak through the sh those shells, so it's, it will help them, that high humidity will help them uh, hatch easier. <clears throat> so there we go. The incubator is done, and it's running, and Larry, Mo, Shemp, and Curly are in place, and we'll see who hatches first. I will post another video when they start to hatch, and I'll keep you updated on the progress here. So in about 21 days. Uh, lots more fun stuff on my website. All kinds of things, uh, blacksmithing, bees, honey, beehives, uh, uh, you name it, uh, the, at stormthecastle.com.